or confirm, or if you can hear me clearly, right? Okay. I want to welcome you um, to my lecture today. Of course, on Monday, we started um, continuous uh, probability uh, distributions. Um, I think I introduced uh, everyone to, uh, you know, some selected um, continuous probability distribution, uh, like uh, uniform on uh, normal, I remember on Wednesday, I, I walk you through um, normal distribution. The, you saw the uh, statistical architecture and the property of normal distribution. And of course, we apply that, you know, to real life uh, situation. Today, we go to visit another form of probability distribution. Uh, the focus is going to be on the um, exponential and gamma distribution. Okay, so uh, in the outline, uh, even though we still have some other um, continuous distribution uh, that we haven't done, uh, like uh, chi-square F and beta, those ones will be reserved for the lecture on Monday. So the focus today uh, will be on exponential and gamma distribution. I, I really want you to focus on the board because uh, what we're gonna do today will be more mathematical. Uh, it's basically gonna require the knowledge of calculus and the knowledge of algebra. But I can assure you uh, it's basically gonna be easy. Okay, so um, I'm also gonna give illustrative uh, examples. Okay, so let's get started with the exponential distribution. Now, let me tell you this. We find ourselves in a world that is stochastic in nature. We live in a probability space. And if we really want to, what, 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 makes, what makes the world probabilistic? What makes the world stochastic? because of the fact that we have variations. If there's no variations, I don't think we're basically gonna have any cause to get worried. If there's no variation, um, maybe you are talking about an environment where there is one state of nature, an environment where there is one state of nature, it means it is only one thing that will happen. That environment does not exist under the sun. So what we normally you have is environment with more than one state of nature, where there's variation. And the only way to understand such environment, since we know there's a variation, then we need the knowledge of probability distribution. I'm gonna say that again. If I really want to understand my environment and not only understanding my environment, even able to predict the occurrence, like future occurrence of events, why do you think we're so worried? knowing what is going to happen in the future because we have witnessed different occurrences. And that is why we get worried. If the occurrences have been the same, there's nothing to worry about. And that is the reason why we need to understand the probability distribution of events before we can actually make a meaningful inference about the event. Now, for instance, if I'm interested in, you know, um, predicting probability between, maybe time between um, occurrence, maybe for instance, I want to talk about like time between eruptions, time between eruptions, okay, time, between eruptions. 
Okay. Or I, I want to talk about time between customers. Time between customers. Maybe I actually have a restaurant and customers arrive. And I want to figure out what is the probability that the next customer is going to arrive in maybe less, less than two minutes. So time between arrival, if I'm interested in that, or not really that if I'm interested in time between the occurrence of natural events, we do respect to uh, people in Syria and in Turkey, you know, recently um, they witnessed uh, earthquakes, right? And the earthquake happen, happens, you know, between each other, like the war in Turkey happened and the one in Syria, you know, followed by the one in Syria. If I want to talk about the time between that, then I'm going to, I should be thinking in the direction of exponential distribution that we want to talk about now. Not only that, the time between calls, okay? The time between calls. I'm having a call now. Maybe somebody called me. What is the probability that, I, that uh, the, you know, the next call will arrive in, in, in two minutes? You know, for those who are in a, in a call center, now work in a call center, they basically need that information. And for them to be able to know that, they need uh, the idea of exponential distribution. So because of that, I'm presenting to you exponential distribution that we actually use to model time between occurrences. Not all, we, we also call it, uh, you know, um, the waiting time before the occurrence of an event. If I have electrical material, uh, how long am I going to wait? Okay until events of failure will happen. And that is why every electrical component, they have life expectancy. They have average life expectancy. We don't want a situation where they're gonna fail suddenly. We basically need that information in advance so that we'll be able to prepare. Does that make sense? You know, if you really understand the essence of a concept, or the essence of a topic in real life, you will understand, it. You, you, you appreciate the topic. The exponential distribution, that is a mathematical architecture, f of, f of x comma beta, equal one over beta, exponential is power minus x over beta, uh, x greater than zero, okay? For x less or equal to zero, it does not exist. That's why you see equal to zero. So which means we're actually gonna be focusing on, you know, non-negative, okay? We're not talking about non-negative. Now, and we expect the beta to be greater than zero. The beta is a parameter here, it's a rate parameter. We call it rate parameter, okay? That's a rate parameter, okay? Now, if I have uh, f of uh, s comma beta, okay, given as that, you know, I can also tell you the mean and the variance because we basically want to know average, okay, of the occurrence within an interval or the waiting time. You know, if you really want to, if you care about knowing how do they arrive, at the, at the average life expectancy they normally put on all this. Then they, if, if, if that follow exponential distribution, then the mean is going to be equal to beta and the variance is going to be uh, beta squared. Of course, we, we have a way to investigate that. If you want to go by, if you want to go uh, by what you've done before, okay, uh, expected value of x is basically going to be from zero to infinity. Don't forget, um, the state space is from you know zero to infinity. Okay, x, f of x, the x, and of course, it's zero to infinity. X. Well, what is the exponential 
is one over beta s this, okay, the x, okay. What I'm trying to tell you now, when you try to integrate this, this is your knowledge of calculus. Uh, this is basically going to give you beta, okay. And if if you try to get the variance, the variance of s is going to be a spreader value of s squared, of course minus that of squared. So which means you actually need to, you know, to get this zero to infinity, uh, one over beta exponential uh, raised to the power that the x. Okay, so you also need to get that, and by the time you get um. You know, by the time you get uh, that, okay, you subtract the square of the mean from that, and that will give you the variance. So, which means uh, the beta here is actually, if actually the the uh, the average, uh, you know, the expected value of x, you know, if x follow exponential distribution, so that is what they use to figure how the average life expectancy of maybe electrical components. Okay, so um, if you take a look at this example now, okay, example 6.18, you know, they said that uh, find K such that, you know, such that, such that, you know, that guy is a legitimate uh, density function of an exponential random variable. Uh, it, uh, of course, uh, for it to be, um, a legitimate uh, function, okay, of exponential, of an uh, exponential random variable, uh, you actually uh, expect uh, that integral from zero to infinity, uh, f of x, uh, dx, must be equal to one. That is a total area under a curve, you know, um, because the exponential distribution uh, is actually, um, a continuous uh, probability uh, distribution. So if I want to investigate the legitimacy of a PDF, of course, uh, this actually uh, must hold, okay? Now, so what I'm trying to say, based on this guy now, you know, you're basically going to put K, uh, EXP, uh, negative 2013, hex, DX must be equal to one, okay? And don't forget the K that is here, you can actually put that out. That is what you basically want to find. But let me tell you this, with what I'm seeing now, if you, if we, even without doing calculus, I can figure it out. I need you to pay attention now. I, I, I want to take you back. Look at the F of X, right? If I have that, what was the, what was the mean? Uh, the mean was beta, right? The mean was actually beta, okay? If the mean was uh, actually beta, okay? You know, what I have here, okay? It's more or less like, uh, you know, I'm actually going to have something here that may have to do with this, okay? So, uh, I'm still coming to that, how you can do it without applying calculus. But of course, you know what to do here. All we just need to do is, uh, if you want to apply calculus, let me be calling this uh, iris to power that. Uh, so applying calculus now uh, is basically going to be this guy divided by this guy, okay, from a zero to infinity equal to one, right? So you're going to plug in infinity. Then you're going to plug in zero. You're gonna subtract, and you need to take note that uh, exponential. Uh, you need to take note that uh, exponential raised to the power of that guy is zero. Okay, so in the end, you'll be able to get your k. Okay, any question on how to get k, how to get constant? Any question? You are good, right? Okay. Now, take a look at this example now. Uh, suppose uh, that the time in hours required to repair a each pump is a random variable x. Because let me tell you this. Why am I thinking in the direction of exponential distribution? The time required 
to repair. That is the same thing as a waiting time before the occurrence of an event. What occurrence do you have in mind? Repair. Oh, how many minutes am I going to wait? Or how many hours am I going to wait until I get this fixed? Repair or repair. That's what we mean. Okay. Now, that is a random variable X. And it's having exponential distribution with the parameter beta equal to half. You know, I told you the parameter in a uh, exponential distribution. Okay. You know, here now I'm using beta. Some people can use lambda, they can use whatever, you know, but whatever notation they use, that is a parameter. But the parameter here now is given to be half. And the question now is what is the probability that at most one hour will be required to repair the heat pump? What are we talking about? Let us reason now in real life. I visit a shop where they repair item. Maybe my computer is having an issue. And I take my computer to a repair shop. And I, because, uh, you know, I don't want to waste my time because I, I have other schedule or I have other appointments to catch up with. And I basically want to figure out in my mind, like, or, you know, what is the probability that the number of hours that would be required to repair that is, uh, you know, at most one hour. You know, at most, you now need to interpret mathematically. Let me tell you this. If you really want to understand the word, we have to leave the word mathematically. Does that make sense? Okay, so at most is the probability, for instance, if I, I, I already said my X follow exponential with a parameter beta, right? With a parameter beta and the beta has already been given. Okay, and I know that my f of x, okay, is basically going to be this guy. Okay, and of course, I know um, the state space is all uh, that. Okay, what I want to figure out now is the probability of x less or equal to one. This is what we call at most, at most one. Okay, less or equal to one. So it basically means I'm actually going to start from one, then I'm going to end up in infinity. Because uh, this is from zero to infinity. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry, that's a mistake. Uh, I'm going to start from zero to one because uh, the highest is one. Okay, so from zero to one, then I'm going to do one over beta. Uh, this guy here, the X, but now uh, the beta is already given to be half. Okay, you just need to plug in uh, half. And I want to see that when you plug in half, uh, I think you're basically going to have that uh, exponential raised to power. I think that is going to be like, I'm seeing two X, the X. Okay, because uh, when you plug in uh, half, you're going to have uh, this. And do you know that when you were in high school, when you were doing calculus in high school, you normally see this. And you're going to be, even my daughter in high school is going to say, dad, what is the meaning of this? Even though my daughter know how to, how to, work the mathematics out, but it doesn't, she doesn't really know what led to this. But you now know what led to this now. You can see uh, the story, okay, that actually led to that. So now all we just need to do here is just to solve that. Any question? Okay, of course you can also, for at least two, okay, that will be X greater or equal to two. And you know, for X greater, or equal to two, it means you are basically starting from two to infinity. You started from two to infinity. And you, you for this guy, for this same guy, for this same guy, any question? Any question? Now, what is the meaning of what we're doing in real life? Okay. The value that I got, if you multiply that value by 100, I want to assume now, let's say for instance, um, the value you got for this, I'm just, um, you know, uh, assuming 
okay? Um, if a value that you uh, actually, okay, okay, let me even do this so that yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna see. Uh, if I do this guy now, I'm actually gonna have divided by minus two, there's a two here from zero to one, this cancel that, then I'm gonna have negative exponential uh, raised to power minus that from zero to one, then I'm actually gonna have uh, this guy to one minus minus so uh, this guy to zero and of course this is going this is going to be one minus uh one minus this can somebody give me this result i i want it to make sense can somebody use a calculator now what is exponential raised to power negative two then whatever you get subtract from one i need it to give me the answer what well, i i want to interpret so that it's going to make sense to you okay can somebody use calculator now to get that guy subtract from one. What do you have? Is, is it after subtracting from one, right? Okay, it's zero point, what? Thank you so much. Take it, you know what? Send me an extra, send me a message for extra credit. You have one point for that. Okay, now if I, if for this to make sense, you know what I'm gonna do? I will multiply by 100. What does that mean? What that means is 86% of the time, it is six percent of the time. Then I, when you know, when I want to repair uh, my heat pump, it is six percent of the time. I'm actually going to spend at most, at most one hour. Does that make sense? It is six percent of the time. It means people spend at most uh, one hour. Okay, so whatever you uh, actually get here, okay, whatever you get, you multiply by hundred, and that would be okay. That is a percentage of time that uh, you know the repair actually took at, at least two hours. Does that make sense to you now? You know, if you really want to enjoy your probability, okay, then I need you to have a practical mind, okay. Be using percentage, you know, relate that. That's what I mean. Okay, so of course you can do all this now. You know what actually uh, led to you know, all that. Okay, so, um, but let me tell you this. I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to pay attention now. I wanted to pay attention now. How do I do, how do I evaluate these guys without using calculus knowledge? You know here, I'm using calculus, right? Okay, how do I actually, you know, work on that, evaluate that, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, without using knowledge of calculus. Then um, basically you need a, a gamma and function, okay? We need a gamma function. Now, I wanted to take a look at the board, uh, look at what I'm uh, you know, projecting now. Gamma alpha, I'm talking about gamma function now, not gamma distribution. We are still on exponential. So gamma, gamma alpha has two definitions. It has integral definition, and non-integral definition. Now, gamma half i is the same as integral is zero to infinity, x raised to power alpha minus one, exponential raised to power minus s ds. That's an integral definition of gamma half. -a. Now, if I want to talk about the non-integral definition of gamma half -a now, do you know what, uh, uh, what I'm presenting, what I'm telling you now? Is this guy here? Now I'm gonna write a so I, I needed to understand this guy now. Okay, uh integral integral definition. Okay, gamma alpha is is zero to infinity. Okay, x raised to power alpha minus one, then the x. This is an integral definition, but what about non-integral? You know the meaning? The non-integral means I don't want calculus. Non-integral. The non-integral is going to say gamma alpha is alpha minus one factorial. <laughs> and you now know what I'm going to do now. I'm now going to equate this guy to this guy. So I'm going to say the integral definition, okay, of a gamma alpha, okay, is the same as a non-integral, and the non-integral is alpha minus one factorial. You know what I'm gonna do now? 
using this now, if you go back, if you go back, if I want to do number one, uh, if I want to do A without using calculus, if I, I, I wanted to focus on the ball now, if I want to do A, you know, take a look at it, it's zero to infinity, right? Exponential raised to power this guy dx. I, I don't want to use calculus knowledge. I want to use the idea of a gamma function. And this is what I'm actually going to do. Now, let me, before I first investigate whether gamma function apply, zero to infinity, okay? That is one criteria. It has to be from zero to infinity. Does that make sense? And I have exponential carrying something. Okay, this is, this, is, this is a variable x. This is a variable x. Then the idea of gamma function is going to work. But let me tell you this. Before we can, we need to for of all do something here before we can apply gamma function. Because the gamma function requires that uh, as you have x, and the exponentials you only carry negative x, not carry negative two x or whatever. Now, because of that, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to call me and use a substitution first. I'm going to say let y be two x. Let y be this guy. Now, if y equal to that guy, what is the y dx? Okay, uh, the y dx is basically going to be two. Okay, what is the x? The x is basically going to be the y, okay, divided by two. Now, if I come here now, I'm actually going to have a one over two, okay, exponential raised to the power of this, right? Then uh, uh, the y, do you see what I have now? Now, if you, uh, let, let's, see, let's see what we have. Uh, so if you take a look at this guy now, I can use a gamma function here. Okay, if you want to go back and see the gamma function, you basically going to see x raised to the power of that exponential raised to the power of negative s ds. We also have the same here, but do you know why? I know why is missing here. That means our y is carrying zero. <laughs> If y is carrying zero, I can apply the gamma function on this guy. Okay? I can actually apply gamma function. Okay? Now, when, when s is carrying alpha minus one, that was a gamma alpha, right? Which means you added one to alpha minus one to have alpha. Then this guy here is gamma one. This guy, the whole of this guy is gamma one. So I'm going to say half gamma one. What is gamma one? What is the non-integral definition that I wrote the other time? Look at B. What is gamma one? One minus one factorial, which is a zero factorial, one. Then my answer is going to be half. My answer is half. I'm done. My answer is half. And, and that is now telling you that I can use the idea of a gamma function, okay? Now, I want to award an extra credit now, okay? I, I like giving now extra credit, okay? Can somebody tell me? What is the gamma for, C? like what, what gamma can you call question C? You know, you can see C, right? Integral of zero to infinity, S square, that what gamma is, oh, Two people, okay, two people, okay, because I want to give two extra credits. You know what I'm going to do? So send, uh, send, uh, Message to no, I don't joke with my extra credits. I have, even if I've not applied now, you know, I, I'm waiting for the deadline for the makeup. Okay, for those of you who have extra credit, I've seen your message and it will be implemented. That is gamma three. Do you know that if this guy is gamma three, if this guy is gamma three, okay, 
uh, if uh, is zero to infinity, s squared, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna give you, I'm still gonna give you, but it's not gamma three. Yeah, it's not. I have seen reason why it is not. But you guys try. Can somebody tell me why it is not gamma three? There's something that is alternate the arrangement, yeah? Because of the two S, do you know? Do you know we call the one we can call gamma three? That is gamma three. Okay. So how many people have to credit now? Three people have. Uh, now, if I you have one point five, they have one one credit. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So now this is gamma three, which is this guy. And what is gamma three? Three minus one factorial. Yeah? Which is two factorial, which is two. If, there, if, if I can go by way of this, why am I wasting my calculus method? Using calculus, you know, I'm going to use integration by power. That's going to take forever. But I can only use gamma if I have a zero to infinity. Otherwise, I can't use the idea of gamma now. Okay. Now, like, how do I do this one? You know, I said uh, the one here is not gamma today because of the negative two, I'll for force use substitution force. I'm gonna say, okay, let y be two x. Okay. If y equal to two x, then I'm gonna say uh, the y ds, the derivative, that will be two. And that implies the x, okay, to be uh, ds to be the y over two. Then I'm gonna come here now. So there's gonna be one over two is zero to infinity. And you know, I can no longer substitute for S, you know, here um, X is going to be Y over two from here. So uh, Y over two squared, exponential raised to the power of this, then the Y, right? So this is going to be two squared four, right? One over eight, right? One over eight, then it's zero to infinity. Y squared, then it is this now, that is gamma three. You see that? It's going to be gamma three and gamma, you know, so when this guy is gamma three, so which means what I have here now, it's going to be one over eight, or one over eight, gamma three, which is one over eight, or uh, three minus one factorial, two over eight, and the final size is one over four, which is 0 0.25, which is the same thing as 25%. Okay. If that is taken now. I believe you understand how to use the gamma function. Then you can evaluate that now without uh, calculus knowledge. You can use the idea of gamma to do that. Take a look at 6.20. If you if I follow exponential distribution with parameter beta, derive it cumulative. I'm going to tell you what is the meaning of cumulative now. I need you to focus uh, on the board, okay? You know, cumulative, you know, if uh, if f of x, you know, the f of x here is a lower case f equal one over beta, okay? And you know, s greater or equal to zero, right? Okay, if, if they ask you to find a CDF, the CDF is an uppercase F, okay? And it is the probability of this less or equal to X. That's accumulated to a point, okay? So which is basically going to be, uh, you're starting from zero to X, okay? Uh, this is in terms of X, but I'm not going to call, I'm, not, I'm going to change this. I can do one over that. I can say T, then the T. Do you see that? So when you take a look at this, uh, probably in the end, um, when you do the needful, uh, you basically are going to have uh, maybe this, okay? When you have this guy now, this is a common lady. When, the, when, 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 when do I use this, okay? Do you know we use uh, this, like for instance, in survivor analysis, in survivor analysis, you know, uh, if a patient has um, uh, maybe disease and 
you basically want to know uh, like um how many what is the minimum number of maybe hours or days uh that the patient can be cured of of that i may want to say okay what is the probability of x less or equal to 50 like how many what is the numbers of maybe hours or minutes that we're actually going to wait okay so you can then you're going to plug in 50 here okay and you know your beta okay and do you know that is in, in survival analysis we also call the probability of x less or equal to x like in case of okay um some patient have um we do respect to those uh, who actually have um, terminal disease um if they really want to know like what is the numbers of uh, day or years we can manage um you know they can be managed okay and may or we want to say um what is the probability that the event of death will happen within uh within within five years this is this is a failure what is the opposite of this the opposite of this is basically going to be s greater than five this is called survivor this is like a failure right this is like what is the probability that a patient will survive like we live longer. Somebody with a terminal disease will live longer than five months or five years, depending on the unit of time. Does that make sense? And if I want to do that, if I get, if I calculate uh, the CDF, then the probability of S greater than that will be one minus the CDF. Does that make sense? Because they are complementing. Okay. You can you can now get uh, all that. Now uh, the next. Uh, any, any question about the exponential before I go into uh, you know gamma distribution? Any question? Now we go from exponential. Let me tell you this: exponential distribution and gamma distribution. They also uh, you know they more do the same thing. Okay. Um, waiting time before the occurrence of events. But the reason why we go from exponential to gamma is because of the memoryless uh, property of exponential. And that was why I actually uh, put something, um, you know, giving, let's say for instance, you get to a bus stop. You know, at times I used to see uh, students like, the really they're waiting for train. And um, what is the probability that, you know, you get to a bus stop and, you know, you didn't meet any train and you got to wait. Okay. Now, uh, you know, the, 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 if you now want to figure out the probability that, okay, you've been waiting for four minutes and train has not arrived. And what is the probability that you're going to wait for maybe like five more minutes? You know, when you want to wait for five more minutes, you've already waiting for four minutes and the train has not arrived. What is the probability that, okay, you're still going to wait for additional five minutes? You know, waiting for additional five minutes means the total, the total um, time of waiting would be nine, right? Now, the exponential distribution does not take into consideration the previous time that you have been waiting. That's a memoryless property. Because of that, in our uh, the probability distribution, we need a shape parameter. So the moment I actually put a shape parameter, you know, don't forget in the exponential distribution, the parameter that we have was a rate, okay? Now we now need a shape uh, parameter and that is why the shape parameter is coming in. So what, what parameter do we introduce now? Alpha, alpha is a shape parameter, but let me tell you this, when alpha equal to one here, when alpha equal to one, it's going to take you back to the exponential distribution. Does that make sense? So, which means, uh, what I'm trying to uh, say now, what I'm trying to say in essence now uh, is, what I'm trying to say in essence is X follow gamma with parameter alpha beta, okay? If alpha equal to one, 
okay? Then X is going to follow exponential with one comma beta. So this is the same thing as X following uh, exponential with a parameter there. So therefore, exponential distribution is a special form of a gamma distribution. Why gamma distribution is a generalization of the exponential distribution. And of course, uh, if you really want to know the memoryless property of exponential, if I want to find the probability of S greater than X plus T, uh, given uh, S greater than T, okay, I come, you know, I arrive at a train station, okay, I've already waited for four minutes, the train has not arrived. What is the probability I'm actually going to wait for X more minutes, okay? So, you know, on a normal ground, you know, if you want to use the knowledge of a conditional probability, uh, you're basically going to have S greater than, you know, that, okay? Uh, intersection S greater than T divided by S greater than T, okay? But let me tell you in the hand, what this guy is going to give you is basically going to be S greater than S plus T. It means it does not remember this. <laughs> it doesn't remember the time you have been waiting. So which means the probability that you're going to wait for additional time, right, does not depend on the time you have been waiting. So which means what happened now? The conditional uh, probability here equal what? Equal the unconditional. Okay? Does that make sense? So the, the conditional probability equal to that. It does not put into consideration that you've already been waiting. Okay, it's independent. Okay, now this is gamma distribution. Do you know that with the shape parameter introduced now, when I vary the shape parameter, when I fire equal to one, when I fire equal to two, when I fire equal to three, I'm actually going to, it, it's going to make the gamma to be flexible. Okay, that is a function of a shape parameter. The shape parameter alpha, when you vary that, it's going to give the distribution different shapes. You know, when distribution has uh, different shapes, it means it can model, uh, any you know, real life situation because in we shouldn't have a static model because these are changing, right? But that's why we need a flexible model. Okay. Now, take it, uh, of course, you can do uh, 6.26 uh, now. You can use the gamma function, you know, to figure that out. But let me tell you this if you don't want to, if you use the integration by path, you know, integration by path in calculus, because you have SA to power five, you're going to use uh, like maybe five pages. <laughs> That's going to be a lot, you know, but with a gamma function, this is good. This is basically going to be easy. Now, the mean of a gamma distribution, 